Exactly two years ago, we reviewed the MG5 EV, an all-electric estate, and at the time there were no real alternatives. And guess what? There still isn't. Well, unless you've got around £85,000 to splash out on the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. Now in this video, we're going to see how it compares to its rivals and to see if it's actually worth its price tag, because the new MG5 EV starts from roughly £31,000 and extends up to £33,500. Now indeed, there are two trim levels, at least at the time of filming and in the UK. Okay, you've got the SE long range and the Trophy long range, both of which that house a 61.1 kilowatt hour battery pack, and that is 57.4 kilowatt hour net. Now, this means that you have got a quoted range from MG of 235 miles up to roughly 250 miles on the entry level trim, given that it's a little bit lighter with less equipment. Now, in our own mixed driving test, we netted 210 to 230 miles, which is actually pretty impressive because it's quite close to the manufacturer's claim. And unlike some of the alternatives out there where it's wildly different with the WLTP claim, this on the other hand is actually pretty good. Now, in case you're wondering, the old model, the old MG5 EV, netted 180 to 190 miles in the very same mixed driving tests. And the reason behind that is because it housed a smaller 52.2 kilowatt hour battery pack or 48.8 kilowatt hour net. Now, putting the older generation model to one side, you have got some alternatives to consider. And here, the new MG5 EV is actually better than the likes of the Vauxhall Mach-E and the Citroen EC4. However, isn't quite up to standard in comparison to the ZS EV and the MG4 EV, which actually do a slight bit better job. Then you have got the likes of the Kia Nero EV with or without a heat pump, the Kia Soul EV, the Skoda Enyaq EV, the VW ID4, and even the hatchbacks such as the VW ID3 and the Cooper Born. All of these actually do better in terms of getting the overall driving range. And while we do appreciate that these are not all electric estates, they are a worthwhile consideration given that they come in at roughly the same sort of price points as the new MG5 EV. Now, very much like its modern rivals, the new MG5 EV does not have a one-pedal driving mode, and therefore means that when you're lifting off the accelerator pedal, you can't come to a complete standstill. Instead, you'll roll at roughly six to seven miles an hour. So, for example, right now, we're going and coming close to stationary traffic. You know, if I lift off from the accelerator pedal, I'm still rolling at around six to seven miles an hour. I have to apply pressure to the physical brake pedal instead. Now, this is quite a shame because it would have been great to see MG actually optimize this across the range, not only the MG5 EV, but alas, that's not the case. Now, in order for you to tinker around with the regenerative braking levels, you have got a little switch found towards the center console, and it's annotated by Kinetic Energy Recovery System. Now, here, you can flick between the modes. You've got level one to level three, and three being the harshest. Level one would replicate the coasting, so in case you do not like any sort of degree of regenerative braking or just want to simply coast like you'd normally do on an ICE based vehicle, then you can of course do that. Now aside from recouping energy while on the move, you can of course plug it in. And here you have got a CCS and Type 2 port found at the front of the vehicle. Now it's worth pointing out that this has got an 87 kilowatt input charge rate and therefore means that at its peak, it can go from 10 to 80% via an appropriate charger in roughly 35 minutes. Now, if you were to find a 50 kilowatt charger instead, it will take you roughly 61 minutes. Now, one thing that will be of disappointment to certain individuals is that the onboard charger does not have any sort of three phase capabilities. In other words, it doesn't have an 11 or 22 kilowatt onboard charger fitted, unlike some of its rivals, nor is it available as an option. As such, via a seven kilowatt wall box, it will take you roughly 10 hours. And if you were to plug it in via a regular three pin socket, it'll take you a whopping 21 hours. Now, aside from all of this, it is worth knowing that the MG5 EV, like a few of its modern siblings, also has got vehicle to load technology. In other words, allowing you to discharge any sort of electricity that you've got within the battery pack to, let's say, a household appliance. However, we've not been provided with the adapter, so we can't attest to the claims, but at least according to the specifications, it should be doable. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about performance. Now here you have got a front mounted motor that dispatches 150 
16 kilowatts of power and that equates to 154 horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. It is claimed to get to 60 miles an hour in 7.3 seconds. However, via RaceLogic's V-Box Spores, we had it tested at 8.02 seconds. Still, it's not too shabby and it's pretty quick to say the least. Top speed is rated at 115 miles an hour. Now, given the placement of the motor, it should come as no surprise to learn that it's operating on a front wheel drive system only. And in our tests, whereby we put our foot down to the metal, we noted that the front wheels would actually spin a little bit. It is actually quite minimal in the grander scheme of things and is nowhere near as bad as, let's say, the Hyundai Kona Electric, but it's just something we thought to highlight. Similarly over here, the driver's feel isn't there, even in terms of its sportier mode preset, and there's some body roll present if you're chucking it around on windy country roads. Now while we appreciate all of this won't be of that great importance to those people looking at the MG5 EV estate, the overall suspension setup must be up there. And in this respect, you'll be pleased to know that it's actually very comfortable to drive, at least in and around town, because it soaks up a lot of the anomalies, potholes, and speed bumps, therefore making for a quite pleasurable experience, at least when you're commuting. Now what will also constitute in having a good driving experience is low cabin noise and here the MG5 EV does fare pretty well at lower speeds although it does suffer from a bit of tyre noise that creeps in at higher speeds. The thing we'd like to point out however is that there's a little bit of low end resonance that can be heard. Now if you want a detailed breakdown of the sound measurements that we recorded within the MG5 EV do check out our detailed audio review that can be found up on your pop banner down the description below or indeed in the pinned comments. Now this does actually perfectly lead us onto its audio system and here as standard on both the SE and the Trophy long range you will find a six speaker audio system with 3D sound. Now on the whole it doesn't do too badly across the sound frequency range but isn't exactly going to excite certain individuals for those people for example who are into their audio. Again more details on this on terms of our detailed audio review so make sure to check that out in case you're interested. Now past this, we have to get onto the use of technology. And here there is a 10.25 inch screen that's planted towards the center of the dashboard. It's actually slightly angled towards the driver, making it a little bit easier to use. Now it's intuitively laid out and also is pretty responsive and vivid. However, we did find that the integration with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto seemed to be a bit temperamental. So much so that we actually had to reset the MG5 EV a multitude of times. Now this was a complaint of ours when we reviewed the MG4 EV and it seems like the operating system hasn't really changed to the MG5 EV so it would be great to see actually the manufacturer optimizing their operating system to work with these third-party mobile operating systems. Now aside from this you also have got a 7 inch fully digitalized instrument cluster which is certainly an improvement over the part digitalized instrument cluster that could be found in its predecessor. Here you will find all the key driving information and you can customize the view to a certain degree. It is a shame however that the instrument cluster does not feed through any sort of turn based navigation data from the infotainment system specifically when it comes to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Equally, there is no option to add a head-up display, which would have been a great addition specifically at this price point. Now, past the use of technology, or indeed the lack of it, we would like to commend MG for including a few physical buttons within the cabin. For example, around the dashboard, the instrument cluster, and the steering wheel. The latter being quite intuitive while you're on the go. So, for example, if you want to adjust your media volume or flick through the different instrument cluster screens. However, it is a shame that all the climate controls are all now based on the infotainment system and therefore makes it less intuitive to use while you're on the move because indeed over here you can access it via shortcut button but if you want to adjust let's say the fan speed or indeed the climate within the cabin you'll have to faff around with the screen. Now on the notion of interacting with different things within the cabin, we would like to commend MG for the overall interior design. From the upholstery, the stitching work, the choice of materials towards the dashboard, the door frames and even the look of the centre console. All of which certainly look snazzy. While it won't compete with more premium offerings of course, it certainly does look the part. Now on the other hand, both the front and rear door bins are not lined with any sort of fabric and therefore means that if you got any sort of loose change or keys, they'll be heard rattling around. Now this does perfectly bring us on to storage and indeed the door bins will suffice, specifically the ones at the front whereby they can easily accommodate a 500ml bottle alongside a purse or indeed a wallet. Then you have got the glove box and towards the centre console you've got a pretty large bay which is lined with a non-slip material. You've then got two USB type A ports 
ports, one of which can be used for connecting up to the infotainment system, and then a 12 volt socket for providing charge to, for example, a dash cam. Then further down, you've got two cup holders, and then you've got a small little storage compartment found within the center armrest. Speaking of which, at the rear of the cabin, you'll also find a pull-down armrest with two cup holders comprised within it. As for the rear portion of the center console, you'll find a very small storage bay and a USB Type-A and Type-C ports, which can be useful for providing charge to your rear occupants. Now, of course, when it comes to storage, we have to talk about its boots. Now, in order to access it, there is a button found just off center from the MG badge, which does feel a little bit awkward. Now, you might be able to notice that when it does open up, it hasn't got an electric tailgate. And indeed, that is not available as an option either, which is quite a shame. Now, thankfully, however, it does open up with that hatchback design. As someone who's just under six foot, I've got absolutely no problems when it comes to loading in and out goods. Speaking of which, over here, you have got 479 litres to play around with, and this extends up to 1,367 litres when you pop down the seats. Now, in case you're interested, the old model offered 464 and 1,456 litres, respectively. Now here you've got a 60-40 rear split folding design, and also a pretty handy retractable and removable bootload cover. Better still, you've got a sizable underfloor compartment, which can be pretty handy for taking your charging cables. Now, while that's all very good, we do have a few complaints or certain improvements that could have been made. See here, you do not have 40, 20, 40 rear split folding seats, nor do you have an integrated ski latch, making it a little bit more cumbersome to take elongated goods. On that note, you do not have a flat loading bay either. Indeed here, the rear seats are pretty propped high and therefore diagonally wedged. And equally, at the front of the vehicle, there's no additional storage compartment, or frunk as it's often referred to. Now we appreciate not every all-electric vehicle has this space, but given that the MG5 EV does actually have a sizable area underneath its plastic cover, it would have been great to see the manufacturer actually optimize this space. Now aside from transporting goods, what about when it comes to giving someone a lift? Well, headroom and legroom at the rear of the cabin are actually not too shabby. Although it's worth noting over here that it won't compete with larger sized SUVs. But on the flip side, in comparison to some of its competitors, there is a flat rear footwell design, and that's certainly appreciated for the rear middle occupant as they can lay their feet completely flat. Now on that note, in terms of the overall seat design, they are diagonally wedged, at least at the rear of the cabin, and therefore means that you might get a little bit of discomfort on your quad muscles if you're going on longer excursions. Of course, if you've got longer legs like I do, but if you've got, let's say, kids that are sat at the back, it will be a non-issue. Now as for the front of the cabin, got six-way controls. They're manual on the SE trim and become electronic, at least for the driver's seat, on the Trophy Long Range. Now, no matter which trim level you go for, you'll find heated front seats fitted as standard, although there's no option to add a heated steering wheel, a heated windscreen, nor heated rear seats. And equally, it's a shame not to see the option to add a fixed panoramic glass roof or indeed a sunroof. Now on that note, the roof rails will take up to 75 kilograms of weight, which is certainly impressive in comparison to its predecessor, which was only capable of taking up to 35 kilograms. As for the max towing weight, it sits at 500 kilograms. Now this does bring us onto its exterior design, and on the whole here, the new MG5 EV is leagues apart from its predecessor. Indeed, it looks a lot more snazzier and upmarket. From the front, it's got a little bit of that aggressive design due to how the headlights are positioned and also the bonnet. As for the side, you have got body colored wheel arches and side skirts, and then you've got 16 inch alloys with alloy covers on the entry level trim, and on the trophy long range, you've got 17 inch alloys, which certainly looks snazzy. You've also got a rear privacy glass in the more expensive trim level. As for the rear, it certainly does look the part thanks to its tail light design and the overall profile that MG have gone for. Now, in terms of your color options, white comes as standard, although if you want a metallic finish, such as the one that we have, it'll cost five. £545. There's also a red tri-coat finish that comes in at £695 instead. Now moving past this exterior design, we have to talk about visibility, and here at the front and at the side, it's absolutely excellent. As for the rear, it's not too bad either. However, it is worth considering that the view can be a little bit limited. Thankfully, you have got a rear wiper, reversing camera, and also rear sensors, all of which come included as standard. In fact, in the trophy long range, you'll also find 360 degree cameras, preventing you to potentially curb your rims and give you a little bit of extra peace of mind. The only worthwhile consideration, however, is that the camera quality is actually pretty low, and for a modern vehicle, one might have expected a little bit better.
So finally we get on to safety. Now we can't quite comment as to how this vehicle would do in the unlikely event of a serious accident because it's not being tested by Euro NCAP, at least not at the time of filming, but we can talk about the driver assistance systems. Now here you have got adaptive cruise control, although it does seem to fail to regulate the distance between you and the leading vehicle accurately. Then you have got lane keep assist and lane departure warning, alongside high beam assist, traffic jam assist, and also emergency brake assist, all of which are certainly appreciated and given that they come included as standard across both trim levels it is certainly a highlight over some of its competitors furthermore unlike some of its rivals you can easily disable lane keep assist by pressing a button on the left hand stalk this is something that is of a complaint of ours for example of vehicles from the Volkswagen group because in order for you to disable this each time you step foot inside the vehicle you'll have to faff around with the infotainment system that's not the case in the MG5 EV and in this respect the manufacturer should be commended so with all that in mind it brings us on to our verdict and quite frankly the new MG5 EV is a refinement and an improvement over the previous generation model, offering longer electric range and also better exterior and interior styling, all while retaining practicality and driving comfort. Now granted it is more expensive, but so are the prices of other all-electric vehicles, and indeed here all of them have risen in price. Now given all of this, and given what you can currently find in the market in terms of SUVs and hatchbacks, the MG5 EV still undercuts them and still provides a comprehensive package. As such, it gets our Best Buy Award. Now we'd be curious to know what you make of the vehicle down in the comment section below and if it's the vehicle you would pick if you had roughly £30,000 to spend. Now if you've liked this independent detail review and want to see more from myself and the channel, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been Chris from Toaster EV and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.